presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Welcome to In the Shop, I'm Clay Croft, and today I'm here again with Justin Monticello from Patriot Campers, and we're in, or on the Gold Coast in Australia, at the Patriot Campers shop. Mm -hmm. So what do we have today? We have 2018... 2018 Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger. Very popular. Very, very popular vehicle. This is actually now, it's the number one selling uh, dual cab utility in Australia. Really? It's just taken over the Hilux for the first time in 20 odd years or something like that. Um, Why is that? Look, I, I can't put my finger on it. I think it's, it's now Ford's really stepped it up a little bit. The new motor in this thing's a good bit of gear, 3.2 litre diesel, yep. six speed auto, three and a half tonne towing capacity. This is the first time that Patriot campers have stepped outside of the Toyota badge. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is our newest lineup. We're looking for something that's, that's probably more affordable. Mm -hmm. And that's why we started with this platform. We had the choice between a Hilux or a Ranger and we thought we'd kind of go with the trends yeah. and, and see what we could do with the Ford. Yeah. Well, it's a great looking truck. Mm. You step back and it's like, yeah. Yeah. So I, at the time of this recording right now, the mm. Ford Ranger is just about to come out yep. in the United States. And we're yep. not a hundred percent sure how much of it carries over. Mm. Uh, we're just starting to really get some snapshots of what it's going to look like. Yep. They are pretty similar, but we just don't know all the, the details. A but it's pretty them. exciting in yeah. the US to have the Ranger coming in. Yeah, it's really exciting. And I think we, we've been following, obviously, what's going on over there in the States. And I think the Tacoma's had that market for a really long yep. time. Mm -hmm. Now with the, the introduction of the Colorado mm -hmm. uh, and some of the, the gear that I've seen coming out over there, I, thought, yep. I think the Ranger will do well. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of your packages. Like yep. this is your truck. You can buy this turnkey from Patriot. Yep, yep. this yeah. is actually Sarah's vehicle. So oh, it is. Yeah, this is Sarah's car. Okay. So Sarah, now with um, all the trips that we do, the kids are getting a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Three kids in the back of, of any truck is becoming a bit of a struggle with the yep. boys are, are teenagers now. Mm -hmm. So Sarah and Mia generally are taking away their own vehicle now okay. and, and me and the twins normally roll in something else. We're always in the Land Cruiser. Mm -hmm. um, so that was another big decision in, uh, in, the, in the platform that we were gonna go with, something that's a little bit smaller little bit more nimble yep. um, but still has the, the capabilities of the bigger trucks for sure you know the good thing about the Ranger is too even the XLS model which this is one of the base models that we started with mm -hmm. it comes with a factory rear locker ah. you know so that's that's something else that's warranted through Ford and, and tested so that's that was another big part of making the decision on which car to go with sure mm. so you outf outfit them yep and looks like t kind of a lot of the standard Patriot Camper stuff, TGM upfitting. Yep. yep. What, what are we looking at? Suspension. Suspension wise, we've got, we've actually just put in this one. We've just done a big trip up into Arnhem Land, about 20,000 kilometers on the new uh, TJM Pace suspension. They've stepped the game up into a remote reservoir, fully adjustable shock. Okay. So we, we started off with those shocks. Uh, we've done a lot of testing there for them. We've pulled them back out, given them back to those guys up there. They're going to do the evalu evaluation, sure. look at all the valving and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that was a really good bit of gear. It's about a one and a half inch lift. Okay. Um, we, we tried a couple of different spring rates in the back, obviously with a ute, it's hard to find that balance of a daily driver and then a fully loaded truck right. with a spring rate. We ended up with a 450 kilo constant rate uh, spring in the back, which okay. we found with the peak or tray has, has been the perfect sort of, um, it, 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 it sits right on the fence of, of being able to do both those jobs with the car. Okay. Mm. Uh, TJ and bull bar at the front, uh, scrub rails and side steps. We've come up with a new concept for that 50 mil track of uh, aluminium flares. So we've actually got flares that fit underneath the side rails. As far as I'm aware, this is the first time that, that somebody's done that in Australia. Okay. Um, so we can still run a wider offset and you're legal because you're under the guards. We've got a TJM 12,000 pound winch okay. up the front. No rear winch on the Ranger. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really deem it necessary for, for a truck of this size. Sure. Under the hood, we've got um, exhaust, uh, chip, and pedal torque. 
uh, from Torquet, which has now got a new, actually really cool feature. It's, it's all controlled by an app now. So you've got three modes. Uh, you've got economy, sports, and race mode. Oh. And that makes a massive uh, difference in this truck, more noticeable than any other tuning that we've done on any car before. Huh. And that's just a throttle response? Throt or? Throttle response, a mapping, so you okay. get uh, a lot better fuel consumption mm -hmm. um, out of the vehicle, and you get a nice little note out the exhaust as well. Cool. Uh, snorkel, that's a must, yep. obviously, for Australia. Have to have a snorkel. Right over at platform, I think we've already touched on. Uh, Interior-wise, HEMA HX1 comes standard in the Super Tourers, so we've replaced the rear view mirror and we put a, a HEMA in there. Mm -hmm. We really haven't done much else to the interior besides, obviously, Red Arc Tow Pro. We're always towing. You've got, yep. to, got to have a Tow Pro. Second battery kit is in there as well okay. to run a second fridge. We've got some seat covers, canvas seat covers on MS, there. MSA seat covers. MSA stuff, which is really good gear, another Australian company. Mm -hmm. uh, GMA, UHF, and a, and, a, and a whip on the front. Uh, and that stuff there, I was explaining to you the other day, that's got um, the new XRS Connect in it. So what it actually does, you link that to your phone, as long as you've got a GPS signal, every time you click on the radio and you talk to somebody on the, on the radio, it plots where you are on, on the app, on the GPS. So if you lose communications with your convoy, mm -hmm. and we, we did it up in Arnhem Land, I lost Sarah. Yeah. So we just go, we pull up the app, we can say, all right, that's the last point that she communicated, let's go back there. Yeah. And then we just followed the, the app back there through NAV, yeah, and we awesome. ran straight into her, we found her. That's a really... That's a neat feature. That's a really, really cool feature. You know, that there is a lot of products that are getting a little bit out of control with apps, I think. They, they want an app for everything. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I, I don't pay a lot of attention, but I had the guys from GME come down here and give us some training on a really good bit of gear, awesome yep. bit of gear. Um, underneath the truck, uh, we've got a two inch lift. Uh, the, the pace suspension from TJ and we were running, the remote res stuff. Yep. At the moment, we've got the XGS back in there. Um, mm -hmm. Well, they do all the, all the R&D before they release the pay stuff to the market. Moving to the back, we've got the new uh, PCOR yep. tray. Yep. Um, PCOR tray, flares, toolboxes, all the central locking, uh, headboard. You can mount a couple of spare wheels up there. We've got lights in the headboard as well and the big rear, big rear drawer. Awesome. you got to love that central locking. I didn't know what that term meant when you were first telling me, well, but what, it's when... What do you call it in the States? Well, I think it is probably what we call it. Right. But it's, you, you wouldn't know about it. Yep really, because there's not a whole lot of products out there that do it, but when you hit your remote to lock, it locks all your toolboxes. Again, that's one of those things that comes from years of traveling. Yeah. When I, my black truck, for example, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine locks to deal with on the canopy and all the toolboxes. Yeah. So when you pull up into town, you've been remote for so long, you pull up into town and getting the keys out and fiddling around with nine locks. Yeah. It, it gets annoying. It so, is annoying. Doop, yeah. Done. Done. You're in the pub. And then you're always <laughs> locked up because you yeah. lock your truck, you're walking away. And you're, you that's just, it. That's pretty cool. That's it. So that's, that's probably a, a quick overview on, um, on what we've done to it. Cool. Well, it looks great. So when you're looking at a truck that upfit for yourself, what mm. are your... So we've looked at quite a few of your trucks now and being, being here in the facility, there's a wide range of vehicles. Mm. What are the key things for you when you're looking at upfitting a vehicle? And what are the, what's your thought process on how to get something just right? It's a, that's a really, really difficult question to answer because every single vehicle, every platform that we start with, they all do something well and they do something not so well. And mm -hmm. until you actually get the time with that vehicle and, and get to understand its characteristics yeah. or its personality, mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 a ver it's a very diff difficult question to answer. The Ranger, uh, I think the reason why we, we chose the Ranger in the first instance was it, it's because of the, the starting price point. This vehicle here is $40,000 off the lot. Okay. A Land Cruiser, you're starting at $70,000 for a 79, mm -hmm. um, and you're starting at $80,000 odd for a 200 series. Yeah. So that's, that's really out of the budget for, for most people, and for us as a second vehicle for the family as well. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to have another $150,000 Land Cruiser sitting in the yeah. garage that only gets used for trips. Right. So really what, what we've turned this into and what you see this, this vehicle, it's got a couple of options, mm -hmm. but the base range of Super Tourer that we sell is $79,000. Turnkey, you have everything that you need mm -hmm. to go wherever you want to go in Australia. To get a Land Cruiser to that standard, you're looking at $125,000, $130,000. Yeah. Yep. So that was, a, that was probably the biggest consideration with this particular platform. Mm -hmm. We wanted to build something that was a lot more, uh, a lot more accessible yep. to the majority of people, including us. 
when you look at that, as far as I know, there's, there's three companies in the world offhand mm. that are doing something like what you're doing. Mm. There's Arctic Trucks in Iceland, yep. where they upfit trucks for Arctic travel. There's American Expedition Vehicles in the US, yep. where you can buy a turnkey solution. Mm -hmm. And then there's Patriot Campers in Australia, where you can buy a turnkey solution, where you've upfitted it in a certain specific way. Yep. And there really is a price point value. Uh, I've, I've personally bought a prospector because once you get into accessorizing all this and paying the different shops for different accessories and getting this suspension and then now it goes back in back to the shop for that winch and mm -hmm. these become cost effective. Look, there's a lot of people that don't know how to build an overlanding vehicle. Mm -hmm. they, they haven't been there before, they haven't done it. There's products that work with other products and there's products that don't work with other products. That learning curve can be a very, very expensive exercise. Yes. And that's the custom, the customer that we're, we're dealing with. We don't do any custom work. So we will not, uh, for example, we will not fit a particular brand of suspension that we haven't used and we don't trust and we don't rely on. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with all the accessories. So the Super Tour range is exactly that. It's, it's a turnkey base package. Then we have a list of options that we know work on that particular platform. Yep. And look, you, you mentioned companies like AEV. That's the inspiration for what we're doing here with the Super Tours came exactly from AEV. Yeah. I've been following those guys for a long time and their business model I think is a, is a great one mm -hmm. because they, they understand that platform, they understand the product, they know what works, what doesn't work. And if a customer wants to retrofit after the fact of the, uh, of the, yeah. the initial purchase, go you, for it. Go for it, do what you want, yeah. you know what I mean? fit that brand of lights or, or, or fit that particular brand of suspension or wheels or tyres or, or whatever they like. But this is the package that we trust. This right. is the package that we know works. It'll get you out there and it'll get you back. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's, it's working. It's, it's, it's being received into the market really well. Cool. Well, this is, this is an exciting truck. Mm. Uh, look forward to driving one in the US. Look forward to driving this one while we're here a little bit, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So you got the Rhino rack on top, the Max tracks, the shovel accessories, looks like solar. Got solar, got a, a big Red Arc 150 watt panel up in there. Okay. Um, and that's, so we've got a, a second battery kit behind the back seat. Okay. So we've got a really nice design back there with a, nice. a, a BCDC, Red Arc BCDC, that'll input the solar and, and obviously uh, the charge off the alternator of the vehicle. Cool. Um, having a second battery is imperative. We've got Anderson plugs in the back. We can run fridges, fridges or inverters or yeah. whatever we like. Uh, that's an option on, the, on this platform. Mm -hmm. You've got a big, big awning on the side, light bars. Um, so that's, that's an option, uh, but that's a really popular option. Now your light bars are unique down here because you have to have them split up. Yeah. Is that, that's some rule here in the Australia? Look, there is, there's regulations in every state and Australia is to be honest with you, it's starting to get a bit ridiculous now. Yeah. The, the regulations and the, the, the way they're enforcing the regulations now, it's, it's starting to get a little bit out of control. It varies state by state. Some states you can have a light bar on the roof, some states you can't have a light bar on the roof. Some states you can have something protruding past the bull bar, some states you can't have something protruding past the bull bar. And they're, I know I get a lot of comments when I'm in the United States, when I'm at the shows, you know, a lot of people actually comment to me about, man, your regulations down there in Australia are crazy. And, and they, are, they are getting a little bit excessive, but um, we do our very best, not do our very best, we comply to every standard that we have to in Australia. Yeah. You know, Got again, to. what the customer does after that, that's, that's really that's up to them. them. Yeah. Mm. You know, a lot of people, a little tangent, just a lot of people don't realize that when you're a company or an OEM manufacturer like Toyota or Chevy or whoever, mm. they're, they're also under hundreds of regulations. Like yeah. headlights have to be so high off the yep. ground. Fog yep. lights can't be any higher than this. We've Pedestrian strike hood lengths have to be, hood heights have to be X, you yep. know? So people say, why can't you build this? Why can't you put a 33 inch tire on this versus mm -hmm. the 31? It's mm -hmm. like, well, cause it's illegal because our whole truck would come out of spec. So that's we, what you're dealing with. As we well. still get it from customers day to day. They don't yeah. understand. Not they don't understand, they don't understand they'd like, but why can't you put that size tire on? Yeah. Just do it, you know? Yeah. We, we, well, once you own it, you can do it. Once you own it, but you, can, do, you can do whatever you like. I can't touch it. No, we can't do it. You know, the, the regulations, we can't go, uh, we can't increase wheel track here in Australia any more than 50 mil. Mm -hmm. We can only offset 25 mil a side. Uh, side. Which isn't much. 
It's not much. We can't go over a manufacturer's specified tyre placard size. We can't go any more than 50 mil over that. So two inches of tyres is all we can do. Yeah. There's regulations on the headlight heights. You know, we've got a 1200 mil regulation. So for example, the big ram we just built, mm -hmm. you know, once we, we built that truck and we pulled all this engineering, all the effort into it, you know, we missed by like 15 millimetres. So we've got to bring the suspension all back down on it. It's, it's, it's hard to deal with, mm -hmm. um, but we have to do it. Yeah. We, we have to comply. But despite all of that, mm. you are able to build this. We're still able, able yeah. to build products like this, and that's what I mean. Working inside that box is, is difficult, but I think my team does it well. I, I think, so I, I too think too. we manage it pretty well. Well, thank you. Thanks for showing us the Ranger. And, Not a problem. Uh, we'll see it out there on the road. Good stuff. Good yeah. to see you, man. Yeah.